going to be some sort of speed counter to get that heart rate because it, it is fast, but it, it, it's around 180, 180 to 200, so your system is under a bit of strain. The absolute last thing he needs is to have this amount of worms in his system. The idea is that soon enough he'll be, he'll be back with his family. The most important thing right now is just for him to rest and also build up his strength. I sit under the rock ledge, but boy, there's a fair bit of rock ledge here. The little penguin. Jeez, I hope he's still here, the poor thing. He's not going to survive without us getting him. He's going to go to the dogs. Hello. Hey, Barry, how you going? All right. The penguin? Yeah. Whereabouts? At Clavelli. OK, I'm about five minutes away. All right, mate, thanks. Come here. Any bird that's in distress is seriously ill, but a wild bird like a penguin, I'm seriously concerned. Come on, show yourself. We're only trying to help. We've just got to get to him and just see what his situation is. We don't really know what his situation is until we can examine him. We might have to try down the other side. Excuse me, you wouldn't have uh, happened to spot a penguin on your walk around the rocks, would you? It's under one of these rock ledges, we're told, but we can't see it at the moment. It's so we're not find it. Yeah, well, that's what we're afraid of. <laughs> well, they were pretty vague. They said he's under a rock ledge, but if you look around here, there's rock ledges everywhere. There he is. Stress? What was he doing when you, when you saw him? Uh, he was just huddled there. He didn't look too happy. But, but pretty quiet? Yeah, oh, no noise until I actually grabbed him. Okay. Then he squawked just like he did then when he took him out of the cave. Yeah. Where have you been, huh? It does seem like a fairly unusual spot to find a penguin. You've got to think for this little guy, there aren't many choices. He's in the city, there are a lot of built-up beaches. He's going to try and find a rocky area where he can just go and hide. Fortunately, we're here soon enough to help him. You can see there he's, he's missing a lot of feathers now. This is the time of year where they will molt. Mm -hmm. And the thing about molting is that it takes a huge amount of energy out of their system to, to get rid of the old feathers, but also, importantly, produce new ones as well. Yeah. Now, if he didn't have enough energy to start with, then during that whole process, he, he just becomes weak and he's really unable to go to sea and, and, and fish enough to, to keep his energy levels up. There's going to be some sort of speed counter to get that heart rate, because it, it is fast, but it, it, it's around 180. 180 to 200, so the system is under a bit of strain. They're pretty safe birds to deal with. The, the biggest risk is, is stress. With that little penguin, we don't want to handle him for too long, we don't want to do too, too, too much to him. He's already sick. We can't just make him even more sick just through trying to help him. All right, Barry, we can put him in there. We don't want to stress him out too much, obviously. So here he goes. Now, he did something very important for us before he went in the cage, which was <laughs> produce that and produce that and nearly got you, so we might just Check out those samples there. We're just going to collect this sample here, and take it back to the clinic. The concern is that he's very skinny, and these guys do get some internal parasites, essentially worms they pick up from, from fish and from other penguins as well. I think the most likely thing that's happening at the moment is, is the fact that he has molted. He's going through the process of molting. To do that, he requires a lot of energy. And if he hasn't put enough energy in, into his bank, which is his fat reserves, then he can't draw enough out during these periods to sustain. And if he's lacking energy, he's going to come ashore and he just can't feed. And if he does that, he's in big trouble.
One of the concerns I had before was the fact that he might be a bit dehydrated. The good thing about all seabirds is they do absorb water very quickly. They absorb it well. Good bird. He doesn't really enjoy that. An amazing bird though. They are. Oh, oh dear. Okay. You're not a big fan of that, are you? No, I'm not overly impressed. It's not the first time I've actually had a penguin. When I was a kid, I had the, uh, not the chore, but the pleasure of, of raising a, a penguin. My dad's a vet up in Newcastle and he uh, brought a penguin home one day. Now for an eight year old kid, it doesn't get much cooler than having your own penguin. So for a month, I actually fed him and, and got his strength back. And it's uncanny actually how much this little guy reminds me of him. So this is just a wet prep. So it's just essentially just a little sample of the poo plus some saline. If, if there are any bugs in there that are gonna move, then we'll see them under the microscope. And you get all sorts of little things like protozoa and, and all sorts of little organisms that could be affecting our penguin. And you will see them once they move, they sort of give themselves away underneath the slide. Ooh, hang on. We've got worms here. So even without concentrating them by doing that, that faecal flight, that's just a small dab of faeces. And I'm seeing a lot of worm eggs here, which is very important and more than one variety too. There's more than one type of worm that's affecting this little guy. When he's already going through the stress of molting, the absolute last thing he needs is to have this amount of worms in his system. So now we've actually identified its worms. It's a pretty simple treatment, just an injection. Just goes into the muscle there and that'll take effect in the next day or so and get rid of those worms pretty quickly. This is 1.07 kilos. So he's certainly fully grown, he's an adult at that weight. Yeah. Penguins live in colonies, so he would have family. Yeah, it's a funny concept that the fact that there might be a penguin somewhere wondering where he is and why he hasn't come home for dinner. But you know, I guess the, the idea is that soon enough he'll be, he'll be back with his family. The most important thing right now is just for him to rest and also build up his strength. The zoo is coming to pick him up tomorrow, but in the meantime, we need to find a nice little spot for him to, to get his, uh, his strength back. We're absolutely shockers out the back. There's so many dogs and cats out there that are just gonna to add to his stress. So I've organised some alternative accommodation. Hey mate, I just had to ask you. Yep. Um, do you mind if I have someone to stay tonight? An extra person in the house? No, that's fine. You sure? No, mate, you don't, like, of course you don't. You don't have to ask me. It's a bird, so... That's fine. Her dietary habits are a bit funny though. She's, she's not vegetarian, but she just eats a lot of fish. Like, we're cooking for her anything. No. Maybe you are. No, she likes it raw, so it's all right. Okay, mate, thank you. Yep. Talk to you later. So, mate, dinner and accommodation. It's not too bad, is it? All right, now, excuse the mess. You didn't give me a chance to clean up, so just close those eyes or something. Boys, this is another day at the office. What have you, what have you got, mate? Penguin. <laughs> a little penguin for you. You washed up at Club Ellie this afternoon. Yeah, well, and is it, what's wrong with him? No, he's, um, he's a bit weak and he's, he's molting at the moment. He's also full of worms, which um, be reassuring. We've treated those, though, so there's no risk to um, cross-contamination in the house. Brown, when was the last time you brought a bird home? That's unnecessary. Look, at least she likes the surf, and we've got a lot in common. She likes the fish, raw. So there's sushi, first date sushi. Beautiful. Do, do you think they have filleted sardines well, sardine or pilchards in the okay. Antarctic? Well, look, you make a good point, but do you think there's some sort of mismatch in, some, in terms of size there? Do you think that's a fair match for a little penguin? You cut the head off a little bit or something, but yeah. We're fine. Have we got any chopsticks though? Because we need something to actually force down the, um, down the fish. I don't think so. It's a sushi bar next door. I'll be back in a second. Can I just grab some um, chopsticks? Just the wooden disposal one. All right. Champion, thank you. We've got them. And yeah, they thought it was just a little bit strange, but never mind. Mate, our meal was almost complete. Chopping boards are usually for chopping, not the presentation. Yeah, but look at this though. Why wouldn't you present this in the best possible way? All jokes aside, we do have a, a penguin here that is quite sick, uh, quite fragile and very malnourished. So the fish, the chopsticks, all very practical and it's a little bit Bondi. We'll see if he takes it. Are you trying to get a 
That's my yeah, finger. Is out. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Patty. Come on, mate. Come on. Right now, he doesn't really realise that he's got to eat, and you've almost got to make the decision for them and be a little bit forceful at the same time. Because if you do it half hearted, then there's a risk that that bit of fish can actually go down his, his windpipe. Good penguin. An interesting little quirk with penguins is they've actually got two windpipes, so it's almost double trouble. <laughs> so the amount of force required there is, is certainly necessary. Tonight we've got a, a pretty quiet night in store for him. I mean, he's, it's probably his first night in Bondi, but uh, it's not going to be an entirely memorable one. It's just going to be a very quiet night. There you go, Paddy. Here's your dinner. He reckons he's probably had better meals than that too, but mate, that's all it's on offer, I'm afraid. There you go. I'll do the washing up, as always, mate. Huh? There's no need for that. Absolutely no need whatsoever. All right. Now, yeah, mate, you are going to bed. He's had his meal now, and now he's, it's time to rest. He's got a big day again tomorrow when the zoo comes and picks him up. So fingers crossed tomorrow he'll be looking even brighter and, and going well. Well, it's been a fun day. We might just leave you there. All right, mate, well, good night. Big day for him. Another big one tomorrow and hopefully a good one. Thanks, mate. Starting to fatigue a bit. think last night and we've only ever seen Paddy stationary so I just really wanted to give him a chance to stretch out those little flippers of his and, and have a bit of a bit of a swim around. Right, well that should do it. All we need now is that very essential ingredient which is water. Just like the real thing. It's just as well to live close to the beach. Time for another run. All right, so that's about right. Nice little depth for him. It's just gonna give him a good chance to get in there, stretch out those flippers, have a bit of a wander around. But importantly, I'm really interested to see how he performs when he's not sitting there still. Have I got a surprise for you? You still remember how to use these, do you? I hope so. Okay, there you go, mate. How's that? How's that? I like it, isn't it? <laughs> Never seen a beach like this before, have you? Just appreciate, this was not easy to create. Thanks. Thanks. That was nice. This is normally a party pool, so... He's having his own little party for one in here. It's amazing though, you, immediately he seems more at home. You put him in here, his eyes brighten up, he wiggles those little flippers like he, like he does, he has a shake, a bit of a preen. You can see this is, is actually closer to his natural environment and he seems a lot happier. How's that? It's good to get back in the water, wasn't it? He's off to the zoo this afternoon, basically to undergo a proper rehabilitation. He needs to develop that new feather coat and also he needs to build up some extra muscle. Oh, mate. He's gonna go through some, some pretty difficult times if he goes back to sea now. We've gotta delay that and that's where the zoo comes in. Look at those little waves, are you? You wanna be out there, don't you? Hey, Barry. How you going? How are you? Good to see you, mate. How's that hey. little fella going? You two have met before, obviously. We sure have. <laughs> Situation is, we've identified the fact he's got some nematodes, so some intestinal parasites. Treated those. Also fed him some pilchards. He's had some water. And he's just been rested really overnight. So, look, he's doing well. I think he's a bit, he's a bit more up today. Yeah. A little bit more feisty. You know, from our end, we've done everything we can. Fantastic. That's the most important thing. Thanks for your help. All right. And, uh, we'll get him over to the zoo. No worries. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks Barry. Please. Cheers, mate. Safe trip.
Hey Gemma, how are you going? Good. You got the two of them? Got two of them. So Paddy's made a friend? Yes, he's made a friend while he's been in wildlife, our wildlife hospital. Right, now is he in here? Um, Paddy's in this in box this one? here. Okay. Yep. Beautiful. So oh, you can take him. him. Okay. okay. Let's go down. How's he going? Really well. He's looking beautiful. He's finished his molt. Good. So he's got spectacular plumage now. Yeah. Um, ready to go out and do all his fishing and all the okay. things he should be doing. As far as you know, that the worms have cleared up that he had. That's, They've all cleared up. His... Yeah, yeah. Yep. Which would be pretty common. It's very common. Been waiting for this moment. Let's see how my little boy's changed. There we go. Well, look at that. New clothes too. <laughs> that's had a good mould. Yep, beautiful. It's absolutely stunning now. It's been a good holiday for you, hasn't it? You've really regenerated. <laughs> Bit of a Taronga detox for him. Yep. <laughs> They just look so good. Mm. They're wearing matching bling as well. They are. So they are. That's nice, yeah. Patty. I like that. I'm not sure that's really you, but I'll, I'll let it go <laughs> just this one. So that's obviously so you can identify him if he comes ashore yeah. again. Yep. Yep. If, if anything happens to him, if he comes into the zoo again, yep. we're able to track where he's been, whether he's been ill before. I'll see you later, mate. You go out there and make some more friends, all right? Hopefully, we won't see you again. It's been good, though. All right? Yep, all right. Okay, all right? There you go, Patty. Off you go, guys. See you, Patty. That's my boy. I'm actually quite proud of him. He's um, he swam really well and, and showed a really good interest in getting back out there. But hey, goodbyes. Pretty close to uh, tearing up. No, it's, it's just good to see him go. He's um, he's done so well. Yeah, there still. Yep, they're there. Does your favourite vet have what it takes to be a star on Bondi Vet? We're looking for the best vets from around the globe to join our team. Let us know at bondivet.com and you could win an incredible once in a lifetime holiday to Bondi Beach. Stay in luxury accommodation overlooking the iconic beach and meet the stars of the series. To enter, tell us in 50 words or less why you think your vet should join the Bondi Vet team. Enter now at bondivet.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.